And I lost my clicker too. I usually have my clicker, which helps me. Okay. I gotta press the computer. So this is how everybody wants to look. Of course not. The the happiness, I guess, that people exude, right? This is how we all want to feel. Nobody ever really feels like that all the time. It'd be nice if we could. I felt happy there, but of course life gets in the way and you don't feel like that all the time. All right, so these are the two little ones. Most people have seen these guys run around in the office. And again, right, this is basically your pharmaceutical commercial. Like, if you want to be happy and run through a field with butterflies, you need to take this drug and ask your doctor. It's not necessarily really the questions that we're going to go over today. So, I mean, they're all, they should all be on there, right? Like, uh, what's your most important asset, right? What is your most important asset? Health. Health, for sure. If you don't have health, you have nothing. Uh, what is health? We're going to go over that. People have a lot of different definitions of what health is, what controls function, and then what interferes with normal function. So this is uh, this is the scary part. So if anybody can leave with anything today, this is what I want you to keep in your mind. Uh, people are getting sicker and sicker and sicker every single day, and that's not just me, the chiropractor, saying that. These are statistics from the CDC website, and this is a two-year difference. So in two years. Heart disease has gone up from 614,000 deaths to 635,000 deaths in two years. But we have the best doctors, best facilities, best medications, best everything else, and people are getting sicker and sicker and sicker every single year. Why? Ask your doctor about this drug, right? That's, that's the model. If you have these symptoms, ask your doctor about this drug. If your doctor says no, just go to the next one, right? So, I mean, all these chronic diseases, these are diseases of lifestyle that are preventable for the most part. Even just walking, if you go for a walk every day, I'm gonna show you a slide at the end, walking will decrease the risk for getting all this stuff. Just walking. Um, if anybody's interested in the opioid thing, opioids fall right in here somewhere. Kills about 50,000 people a year now, but 140 a day, somewhere around there. And these are some of the symptoms, more common symptoms that people suffer with. You could probably pick out a whole bunch of them on there. And this is all stuff that's preventable. Opioid stats, right? I mean, I, unless we can skip that. People know it's a bad problem, obviously. But here we go, the American health paradigm. It's not health care in this country, it's sick care. It's a sick care model that brings in billions and billions and billions of dollars. We're 5% of the world's population. We consume 75% of the entire world, and we consume 99% of hydrocodone. Anybody else think that's a problem? Right? But it's normal here. It's like, well, no, I'm not, I'm not the abnormal one. I'm, I'm the normal one because my case is okay. It's like, it's not. Anytime you get prescribed something, it's not okay. Short-term medicine can be supportive, but you have to understand medicine is supportive if you can correct the cause of the problem, which is caused by lifestyle problems, number one. So if all you do is, let's take blood pressure, for example. Go to the next slide. You know, a lot of people know somebody else. Let's go to, let's go to this one. A lot of people know somebody with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high blood fats, right? So this is what happens with blood pressure. You go in your doctor and they say, oh, you have 140 over 90, it's a little bit high, we should bring that down because blood pressure is dangerous, right? But anybody in this room think high blood pressure is a bad thing for an athlete in the middle of a game? Anybody? Anybody think high blood pressure is a bad thing if you're getting scared and you're trying to run away from a threat? Is it a bad thing? So if you have low blood pressure and you're trying to run away from a threat, what happens? Cheetah, the cheetah gets you, the bear gets you, you're caught, you're done, right? So high blood pressure is a good thing. High cholesterol is a good thing. All this stuff tells us is that you're in a state of stress. So anytime you're in a state of stress, your physiology changes. It puts you in a state where you're trying to survive. You're trying to adapt. The problem is people always stay in this fight or flight state and they're in that state for too long and things literally start to break down over time. Heart disease, like you saw, cancer, stroke, diabetes, everything is going up every year, but people are getting prescribed more and more and more drugs every year. It's not helping. Even if it looks good on paper, oh, now you're 120 over 80. We have it under control. You don't have it under control. It looks good on paper. It is a complete illusion what people think when it comes to this stuff. So this is what happens with blood pressure. It's a great example. Cortisol, stress hormone. Ready to get stressed? 
it brings blood pressure up. Good thing. It's trying to help me survive, whether it's money that's doing it, my family, my job, whatever it is, something is bringing it up and my brain with medication, stress hormone brought it up. What do you think happens to stress hormone? Stress hormone brought it up, right? If I bring blood pressure down with medication, stress hormone goes up even more to bring blood pressure back up. And they go, well, we gotta change your meds, they're not really helping anymore. Just look good on paper. Does that make sense? So the more you do that, you're masking the symptom, right? You're taking the batteries out of the smoke detector so it doesn't beep even though there's a fire burning your building down. People think that's like, well, no, everything's, everything's fine. My doctor said so. You have to understand medical doctors, and I, I have a lot of good friends that are MDs. I am not anti-medicine. I'm not, I'm not anti-medical doctor at all. But um, they're not trained in health care. They're trained in crisis care and how to stop people from dying, which is very, very valuable when needed. But when it comes to addressing causes of lifestyle, you fail miserably. Let me back up just a couple here. So there's two types of stress, right? There's acute and chronic. Acute short term, which is good for survival. And chronic, not so good because it literally breaks things down on the inside out, like you fall apart. Um, and any symptom that you can think of will be caused from that. But three T's, thoughts, traumas, and toxins, those are the three things that will contribute to stress. So thoughts would be your emotions, right? Mental, emotional. Traumas would be physical. And then chemicals could be drinking, uh, smoking, pesticides, household products. Let's keep rolling. Okay. Yeah, another thing's caused from stress, right? We have short-term memory, sensitivity to pain, decreased immune function, problems with hormones, right? Everybody has a hormonal imbalance. There's no such thing as an imbalance. Your body does not create imbalances. So if you talk to any physiologist in the world, people that are experts on this, they will tell you there's no such thing. There's a process called homeostasis. Everybody ever, ever hear that word? It's the process of balance, right? Your body's always in a state of balance, constantly. You're never out of balance. You could adapt to changes in your environment, right? And sometimes those changes that you adapt to for their long term, like I was saying, are not, it's not the easiest state to be in, but you are exactly where your brain wants you to be, always. That's hard to hear, right? Because we've always heard that term, <laughs> hormonal imbalance. Okay, so we're gonna get into how we manage this because that's the important stuff. We can talk about the problems all day, but I'd rather talk about solutions to the problems. Amen? Okay, solutions. Your brain loves new things. Anything new. Your brain loves, loves, loves. Given it's healthy. I'm not saying like try a new drug. Try something new that's good for you. So we have this is one of my favorites, and this goes a long way. Being grateful for things and changing your perception of what stress is. So, perfect example with me, right? Technical difficulty, plan A failed, plan B is not going so great. What's plan C? I don't really know, right? So, just keeping my head in, it's like, what am I, what am I grateful for at this moment? Well, I get to share all this, this message with all these people that could change a lot of lives, and it could have a trickle effect. So I'm gonna focus on that rather than worry about my stupid computers, right? Um, and it really does. Perception changes everything. What's that old saying? It's like once you, um, my dad says it a lot. I, I repeat a lot of the things my dad says, but I usually butcher it a little bit. When you start changing the way you look at things, the things, how does that go? You heard that, right? When you start changing the way you look at things, uh, I'll, I'll talk to him later. But anyway, it's something about like the way you look at things, things start seeing you differently too, and it's just to change your whole world. Um, mentoring somebody is great for your brain, right? Actually teaching people new things, being involved in community, um, awesome, new music, new art, new sports, new hobbies, new friends. Friends that support you rather than hold you back. So a lot of people will have, you know, old high school friends or even family, very, very close, but you kind of grow apart and then you don't necessarily have a lot in common, but because you've been friends for so long, you decide to just kind of hang out together and they just hold you down. And they don't hold you down necessarily because they want to hold you down, but people have this fear that if you get too good at something, if you progress too much, they might lose you. So they hold on to you. And you have to let those people go because they will. Um, yeah, conversations instead of scrolling through Instagram or Facebook. 
So I had a new patient today, she was 17, and um, neck pain and headaches. And I said, how much are you on your phone a day? She goes, I don't know. So you track your screen time? She goes, yeah. I go, pull it up. And it was five o'clock. Guess how many, she, how many hours she'd been on the phone? At five, almost six, over five hours, yeah. And they go, are you on the phone more at night? She goes, definitely. Yeah, so probably add a couple more hours to that, all right? Challenging yourself. So challenging yourself is very, very healthy for your brain. Your brain loves it, but emotionally, we don't always love it because we're not good at something new, right? It's like, ah, I'm better at this. So I'll just stick to doing this. Don't do that. Keep trying new things. Do one of the best things you can do for yourself. Pretty simple thing, taking a different route when you drive home. Even if it takes you longer, take a different route. So we talked about hobbies. Some people know by now that I love to do chalk art, right? That's my, that's Bree there, right? And I do so much of it, I actually have this hashtag now, chalk art daddy, and you can look that up on Facebook and Instagram. This I did and it, w it was washed away in like six hours or something. It rained, it was gone. Like, oh, that's sad. But yeah, so this is one of my hobbies and I share it not to like show off, but I just, I love it. Like I get a lot of joy out of doing that. Does like it, it affect your nap? It affects my fingertips. In the summertime, in the summertime I will burn my fingertips doing that. Yeah, it's, it's actually pretty painful sometimes. Okay, so physical stress, the, uh, the, uh, one of the three T's, right? Thoughts, traumas, and toxins. So this is the trauma part, I guess. So when you look at, at somebody's posture, I'm very proud of my posture. Being a chiropractor, I work on it a lot. Your ear should be over your shoulder, should be over your hip, over your knee, over your ankle. Should be able to draw a straight line through all that stuff. And as soon as you start to deviate from that, this is when you start putting physical stress on your spine and your nervous system. And it's not just your low back that you have to worry about. This actually causes tension in your nervous system and will start affecting all of your functions. That's why they say people that have desk jobs will live five years less on average because of the stress that it's put, that's put on their nervous system. Kind of scary, just from sitting, right? People think just sitting is like a low back thing. It's not a low back thing. Yeah, it causes low back pain, but it's, it's more, way, more, way more than that. Sitting is the new smoking. That's the term that everybody's using. We talk about curves a little bit in the office. We'll keep going though. So this is, uh, this is like a cavity in a sense, right? Dentists treat cavities. Um, chiropractors and other professionals too, I guess will work on restrictions, but this is the chiropractor's main focus is the subluxation of the spine. So it means a joint is restricted. That actually has an effect with the way the nerves are flowing to the cells, organs, and tissues, and the feedback that goes back up to the brain. So there's this continuous circuit, and subluxation will interfere with that. So it might cause pain, might not cause pain. It'll definitely cause some issues with range of motion and discomfort over time, um, but very, very stressful. And this is where you get some people that say like, oh, I went to a chiropractor and it helped my blood pressure. I went to a chiropractor and it helped my digestive problems, or migraines, or asthma, all these things that most people that, you know, outside of this circle, if they haven't been, like, well, I had no idea. I thought it was just back pain and headaches. It's like, mm-mm, whole body. And this is a great example, just a safety pin. This is how it works, right? So if you have a subluxation somewhere, it's disrupting this circuit, like I was saying, right? So we have your nerves carry messages between your brain and your body, cells, organs, tissues, good alignment, good function, bad alignment, bad function. And it's not to say that like if you just correct subluxation, it's gonna fix every single problem you have. Health is multifaceted. You have to do a lot of different things to stay healthy. But you can see there's definitely a relationship between your spine and the organ system. If there's two things in your body that are encased in bone because they are crucial for health. You know what they are? Your brain and your spinal cord. Yeah, your nervous system. So that's why it's so important. Okay, so standard American diet, we love it, we love it, we love it, we don't love this, but this is, this is the result, right? Not funny. For those of you who don't know, food companies have actual scientists 
working for them that actually that basically make you want more food so they lower the satiation of food to make you consume more because it's a business and they just want you to buy more and more stuff we even had patients before that were that worked at uh, grocery stores where they would um, they would place food in certain areas to make people buy more they would place certain things in grocery stores to guide people literally guide them to the products so it's I mean, it's a big business right two-thirds are overweight now 57 million are considered pre-diabetic um, which just means you're having a problem with your insulin you're starting to get some symptoms and unnecessarily considered diabetic yet and they change the values all the time anyway so you never really know when you are but um, anybody here not know what insulin does I'll say it real quick maintains blood sugar so if you drink a Pepsi for example insulin will come up and say stop it keeps it back down basically it prevents it from spiking too high so it kinda it's like its partner in a sense without insulin you'd be you'd be done you'd be in a coma um, but with uh, whenever you get these spikes like if, so if you're eating refined food insulin will jump and it'll crash and that's your your two o'clock crash that people get or one of them right so insulin jumps up and it crashes it just wrecks your energy levels insulin should be stable throughout the day you eat something it should not spike it should be like this so elevated levels of insulin associated with cancer stroke and peripheral vascular disease if anybody looks at their legs their feet lower part of the leg if you see a little red cracking artery somewhere that's the beginning process of peripheral vascular disease um, you might not have any symptoms you might not notice anything but they're early warning signs that you're having issues with your vasculature and it's insulin that's doing that what's refined food it can cause a lot of symptoms we've heard the word we know it's bad but we don't really know what it is so what is what is refined food anytime you break something down away from its normal state what you're eating now is actually refined food I eat it too so I I said raw state right a raw carrot versus a cooked carrot a raw potato versus a cooked potato raw meat cooked meat raw eggs cooked eggs right so we, we all just typically think well flour just you know because a plant's not supposed to be powder they take the they take a plant form they dry it up they grind it into a powder and then that's you know you can use that to make other types of foods but anytime you break something down this is just broken down through heat because it's easier to digest it's definitely more enjoyable to eat for most of us but um, it can definitely have an effect the more raw the better right most of our like Either grandparents or great grandparents used to boil the heck out of vegetables and then finally they're like you know that's probably not a good thing because you're losing all the nutrition you are losing all the nutrition when you cook things or a lot of it I shouldn't say all of it depends on what you cook it but yeah question after yeah the more raw the better you know do what you can it's like I eat that stuff too but obviously I try to eat more raw foods in my diet such as, hmm? such as like raw carrots raw vegetables yeah raw foods what else? I mean uh, you know nuts and seeds those should always be consumed raw they do roast them a lot um, I steam my vegetables I do eat a lot of raw stuff yeah I, I eat fruit I don't eat a ton of fruit nobody really ever cooks fruit unless you're like grilling pineapple or something but even meats like if you were to cook a steak medium rare versus well done there's a difference there it yeah it does taste better I agree but it's more refined if it's well done than when it's medium rare. <laughs> so it's not like with, with this whole insulin calorie thing, it's not just about like how many calories that you're eating. A lot of times it's how your insulin spiking throughout the day. You could be on a low calorie diet and still store fat. Because like, I hardly eat anything. I don't know why I'm gaining weight. It's like I do, right? Because you're not eating the right foods, number one. Um, it's, it's not really about calories. A calorie is like a, it's pretty much a dead theory now. So you can be on a very, very high calorie diet and still be pretty lean. Like Michael Phelps was, just, I mean, he exercised a lot, obviously, but he, he was doing like seven or 8,000 calories when he was training for the Olympics. Wow. Yeah. That's hard. That's a job. I was doing, uh, I was doing like, I was bodybuilding for a while and I was doing like 4,500 and that was, I didn't have enough time in the day to eat. That was like a task. Like, how does this guy eat 8,000? I mean, it, literally eating pizzas and everything, anything he could. You were? No, Phelps. Oh. Yeah. All right. 
That's what food looks like, okay? Oops, next one. So saturated fats, oh yeah? Saturated fat, who thinks it's bad? Put your arm up to think it's bad and don't lie. Yep, one, there's always more than one. You already told me that. Oh, yeah, you know, you're a veteran. You wanna teach? No, I didn't, I didn't know it. You were eating, um, what was it, when you were eating breakfast that day, bacon, and I was stunned that you would put bacon in your body. Yeah. Yeah, protein and fat. Yeah, so anyway, animal fat is very healthy for you. So this goes back a long, long time ago. They were doing research on, on rabbits, and they were injecting them with, with saturated fat. The rabbits were dying from heart disease. So they said, well, based on our study, you know, animal fats or, or saturated fat is bad, bad for animals, so we shouldn't consume this stuff. It causes heart disease. What is it? One guy in the 40s or something, or 50s? Yeah, and, uh, um, and Nitchkoff. Yeah. Anybody know the problem with that study? Rabbits were being were being injected with fat. What's the problem with that study? They don't eat, we're not What's the eat. answer, Carol? Say that what is it? They don't eat that. They don't. They're not genetically equipped to digest fat. They don't have the enzymes because they're vegans. Mm -hmm. They don't eat that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But if you were to do the same studies on humans, bears, wolves, they don't die from heart disease. But that never got through. It just kind of, and even, you know, they've done other studies where they, you go like the Inuit in northern Canada, they eat blubber. They eat pure fat, and there's no heart disease like there is in other areas of the country, right? Lots of other countries have high fat diets, and they don't have the, the heart disease that we have. It's not fat. Fats, saturated fat, animal fats are good for a lot of things, and these are some of them, right? Immune function for sure, develop your nervous system. This is one of the best things for bones. So everybody thinks you have to take calcium to improve. Uh, the strength of bone, which is a huge myth. It's like sitting on the couch drinking protein shakes, thinking you're going to get huge muscles from doing that. Calcium does not build bone. Calcium is required in overall function of your body, but not in the doses that they make people take. But it does increase your risk for fibromyalgia, um, heart disease, peripheral vascular disease, and uh, what else? Did I say cancer? Too much calcium is horrible. Isn't, uh, calcium, too much calcium also causes constrictions in the muscles and add to the cause of heart attack? For sure. Because of the decreased magnesium in our diets? So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, too much calcium is a bad thing. Okay, so if you want stronger bones, number one, you have to do weight bearing exercise and incorporate fats into your diet. Fat will shuttle minerals into, into your bones. Uh, lower level, okay, so this is good. Yeah, and it protects your liver. That's why when people, you know, when they get hungover, what do they want? A big, greasy breakfast, All right? It's not like, let's get up and go eat some carrots. It's like, no, give me fat. I want fat because fat, they know, like the brain knows, fat helps detox. So is the, like, the grease that your french fries are trying to get No, because they use, they use vegetable oil, which is an unsaturated fat, and unsaturated fats are not stable at high heat, so they break down and become, become trans fats. So this is what happens. This is, this is called chemically, okay? If you look at a chemical, this would be a cis fat, C-I-S. And then when you expose it to high heat, all it does is this. That's called a trans fat. That change alone is what causes problems. I'll show you on paper. Well, the hydrogenated oils are the absolute worst. Yeah. So, so back in the day, I was raised in the south. We had canned lard that we cooked. Food. Way better. That was better. Yes, because it's very stable at heat. You yeah. can cook with it. Yeah. And what about olive oil? To cook with? Awful. Really? Why? Yep. Because it's an unsaturated fat. It's not stable at high heat. Okay, that's what I was trying to explain to you. <laughs> it might not be bad to cook at low heat. It's, it's great raw. It's very healthy when you have it raw, but you shouldn't cook at definitely high heat with it. If you want to cook with oil at high heat, you should cook with coconut oil or peanut oil. What about like not having bacon grease? Yes, or bacon grease. Yep. In your refrigerator. Yep. Canola. Canola is unsaturated. Is horrible to cook with. <laughs> Canola. Canola is horrible. Canola is from rapeseed. It's uh, and it's all genetically modified. It's awful. It's terrible oil. But so these are there's omega threes, omega sixes, and omega nines. 
So those three. What's the worst? Soybean oil? Awful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah everything. Yeah. So threes are anti-inflammatory, right? Everybody's heard of that, fish oil. You get omega-3s in a lot of different sources, but fish oil is very high in omega-3. <laughs> Omega-6s are, they promote inflammation, which is found very high in grains, the American diet, right? And uh, yeah, inflammation, of course, as we know, leads to chronic, chronic disease. I could send you that whole thing. I'll send it to you. All right, cool. Yeah? So unsaturated fats, vegetable fats are not bad, but they're bad to cook with. And omega-6s, you do need a certain amount, but typically you're supposed to have like an even ratio of all these omegas. But because grains are so high in our diet, we have about, a, they say about 20 omega-6s to one omega-3. So it's very, very important if, if you do have high grain in your diet, you supplement with, with uh, omega-3. Here's another question. Don't lie to me. Who thinks cholesterol is bad for you? Come on, put your hands up. Everybody put your hand up. Everybody thinks cholesterol is bad for you. What's that? Some's bad? Low cholesterol is horrible. Yeah, and there's no such thing as bad cholesterol. So here's the thing, right? Like cholesterol is used in the production of your hormones. It helps you make vitamin D. Your bile to digest fat. It's found very high in breast milk, which helps a baby develop. So if cholesterol was bad for you, Babies would never survive because cholesterol would kill you. So cholesterol is not bad, and there's no such thing as good, bad cholesterol. This is what happens. If, uh, okay, well, firefighter, perfect. What's the job of the fire department? Put out fires. Put out fires, <laughs> Put out fires right? <laughs> if they show up to a fire and the fire's too big and the fire burns down, is it their fault? She's like, kinda. I just heard fire. It's not, right? They showed up, they tried, the fire was too big, so the building went down. Sometimes they can put it out. So when the body is under a lot of stress, cholesterol goes up. Even if I were to cut my hand, cholesterol goes up. Because cholesterol helps heal wounded tissue. Okay, you could have 96% blockage in one of your arteries in your heart, and then the next day you're at 96.1 and you have a heart attack and they go, oh, your artery is totally blocked with cholesterol. That's what causes your heart attack. That does not cause the heart attack. The stress caused the heart attack. They found something that, that was definitely maybe limiting blood flow, but your body builds blood vessels around blockages all the time. It's called collateral vasculature, right? It's like if you look at a river and they put up a dam and the water needs to get through the dam, what happens? There ain't no stopping, like water is getting through. It's so the same thing happens with blood. If blood needs to go somewhere, it will go around blockages all day long. So cholesterol shows up during times of stress. And they blame it, just like blaming a fire department for not putting out a fire. And I honestly think it just goes back to big pharma, just, you know, big money wanting to sell people more drugs, because they change the values of this stuff all the time. I can't remember the exact numbers, but there were X amount of people that were on cholesterol meds, so let's change the numbers, because people are all at this level. They changed it, and they tripled their business overnight, just like that. So, I mean, and it's, it's nothing to do with research or anything else. So what you're saying is almost totally, completely against what they have said. We can go back to one of the first slides that show you that heart disease is getting worse. Everybody's on more and more drugs every single year because of the philosophy that people have created in this country about our own bodies, right? Like our blood pressure is bad, our cholesterol is bad, I have this, I have that, I want to own my disease. But I understand that and that's the way it is in this country. That's our normal and it is not healthy. So when you speak opposite of what's normal, you're the crazy guy, right? But I have a very, very high fat diet. My blood work is beautiful. I mean, it's uh, this stuff, and it's I'm not the only one that, but um, there's a lot of other people. It's just you don't. It's not really mainstream, I guess. Maybe it's becoming more mainstream now because of social media, but you don't hear your medical doctor telling you to go home and eat a bunch of fat. What would your functional doctor do? Your functional doctor, oh well, yeah. But even in like, if you ask your MD how much nutrition they had in school, they will probably tell you zero hours. Most of the ones I know have told me none, zero. 
So if they give you nutritional advice, be cautious. Toxins, sorry, I go back to you. Did that, uh, I kind of cut you off a little early there. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. So the, the thing with, you said Weight Watchers? Yeah, so is, is losing weight always healthy? Correct, right? There's a lot of unhealthy ways you can lose weight. And people will base, when, when somebody joins like a weight loss program, what's the only way they're going to measure the result? How much did I lose, right? Like that's it. How much did I lose? How quick did I lose it? Oh, I feel a little bit better now maybe. But if somebody joins a weight loss program and they say, well, I lost two pounds in two months, that weight loss program did not work, right? So typically there are ways you can lose weight, but what happens with that too is weight loss will slow down and then they'll tell you to change things up. And I'm not against that stuff because we have a weight loss program at our office too. It's not health food, it's refined food. The only thing that I think it's good for is it gets people motivated. Because once people lose weight, like, all right, now I want to go to the gym. Now I'm ready to eat your crazy diet. Now I'm ready to do this. Now I'm ready to do that. But um, it's hard to take somebody who's here and just bring them way over here when they're not ready. I've done that. I've been guilty, like not meeting people where they're at. And people just, they don't do it. It's like taking somebody that's never ran before and say, come run a marathon with me. Let's go. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. Okay, so... Um, Toxins, found everywhere, you cannot avoid them. But there is something you can do to help support your body with detoxing. 34 pesticides found in uh, your urine, 178 found in produce. The average American has 4,800 chemicals found in your own fat. And then of course a ton of pharmaceuticals in your water. Even if you don't drink the tap water, you shower, so you're gonna absorb some of that. Antidepressants, antipsychotics, any anxiety, antibiotics, any this, any that. Because they're too small for the filtration plant to filter birth control, lots. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, yep. And look at this, this is scary. 70% of people are on dialysis because of prescri pre prescription medication. So the, essentially they're creating, they're creating their own business there. All these symptoms, right? Artificial sweeteners, anybody see that? Lots in there. Sleep disorders, weight gain for sure. Diet pop. It's like kidney damage, depression, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, heart attack. As erosive as battery acid. Um, diet pop is absolute poison. It's absolute poison. If you guys want something fun to read, you should go on, uh, go on Google and just read up on uh, how aspartame was approved. You ever read that? Donald Rumsfeld, it was denied like over and over because they're, you know, the FDA was saying, this isn't safe for consumption. And then Rumsfeld had like all these shares in the company and he got elected and then boom, approved. And he made like hundreds or maybe not hundreds, but tens of millions of dollars. Okay, so solution, how do you detox? So you eat the right foods, obviously, right? Good, healthy, clean foods. Um, support your gut. Your gut requires Obviously healthy food, but your gut needs fiber, two types, soluble and insoluble. Soluble is the type that feeds your probiotics, and insoluble is the type that scrapes the lining of the gut so things could absorb better. Um, you know, like in a banana, you'll find both types of fiber. Um, if it's more green, you'll find more insoluble fiber. You know the amount of calories will change in a banana based on how ripe it is? You know what? Even though the way it affects insulin, what's that? Is that because of the sugars? Yeah, because the sugars break down. It's becoming refined through by oxygen. Oxygen is breaking it down. Um, so even like with insulin and blood sugar, your body can store more fat if you eat a ripe banana versus a green banana. Who likes eating green bananas though? Um, so support your gut. Reduce inflammation. Inflammation is, as mentioned, um, a big killer for everything. So trying to find things that really reduce inflammation. Um, supplements are great, but your, you know, foods are naturally anti-inflammatory, especially if you're eating greens. Um, if you overexert yourself physically, you're gonna ha you're gonna be inflamed, so you have to be careful with that. You can't can't kill yourself. Don't be. I mean, give yourself time to recover, basically. And what else? Not sleeping enough will cause inflammation. 
Uh, supporting your nervous system. So your nervous system controls all functions, so you need good fats for your nervous system. You have to have no stress on that. That's where the chiropractor comes in. No stress on your spine or joints, so the nervous system can function at a higher level. Uh, supplements are good. There's detox kits. There's a lot of bad ones. There's some good ones, for sure. Um, detoxing once a year is great, because you just get to pump your body full of full of ingredients that help you detox faster. Fiber being one of the most important ones. Lots of water, minimizing your exposure to chemicals, exercising helps everything, sleeping enough, and yeah, yeah chiropractor, like I said. Uh, movement, the average person <laughs> watches about four hours of TV a day. They sit about 13. The average person sleeps like seven to eight hours, apparently, I think it's less, but, so imagine that, if you sleep seven and you sit 13, you're sitting 20 hours a day. Isn't that crazy? 31% go to the gym, 56% spend less than 10 bucks a month on staying active. It doesn't have to be a gym, whatever it is. I mean, I think a gym, most gyms actually have memberships for 10 bucks a month now. Even if you don't go, I tell people like, just buy it anyway because it'll, it'll stay in your head and it'll make you want to go. You'll know you're losing money every month if you don't go, so just go, 10 bucks. I mean, you spend more money on a drink at this bar than, than, than that. That's what you paid? That's what you paid, yeah. Uh, yeah, so moderate exercise helps, helps everything, but of course immune response, all of your neurotransmitters in your brain make you feel healthier. Anatomide, anatomide is a neurotransmitter that's produced during exercise, which is also found in chocolate. So you could, if you wanted to, skip the whole exercise thing and just see a bunch of chocolate. You have the same effect, but the big thing with anatomide is it helps you produce this here, brain-derived neurotropic factor, which helps your body regenerate brain cells, regenerate nerve cells. New brain cells. Pretty cool. What yes. Yes, chocolate. <laughs> Real chocolate, not Snickers bars oh. okay, or well, anything. What kind of chocolate? Explain to this one. Real <laughs> chocolate. No, yeah. No, no, the, no, 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 no. She's not looking at that. She's no. looking at the crappy dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Rather than dark nice chocolate. milk chocolate. Dark chocolate. He dark eats white bad. chocolate and milk chocolate. Dark chocolate's better. Nice. Yeah, dark chocolate's See? better. See? Delicious. Yeah, dark chocolate. There's more theobromine, the active compound in chocolate that's anti-inflammatory. And uh, theo theobromine means food of the gods. So it's like a really, I mean, it's, it's a very powerful anti-inflammatory product. It's, it's, uh, yeah, I love this. I don't have time. Here all the time. I don't have time. Grown-up version of dog ate my homework. It's like we have to make time somehow. We have to squeeze it in. <laughs> benefits, uh, I said it earlier, benefits of walking. Like, look at this stuff. Diabetes, heart disease, stroke, blood pressure, triglycerides, breast cancer, lung cancer, <laughs> even in smokers, reduces lung cancer by 72%. Just walking. That's it, just walking, you don't have to go to the gym, don't have to do anything else, just get out and walk. You have to think of movement like a nutrient for your brain. <coughs> your brain needs adequate stimulation, movement, and it needs nutrition. Those two things, that's what the brain needs. If it's not getting both all the time, the brain will suffer. Turn that on. Let <laughs> there be light, yeah. Yeah, more benefits of walking, digestion, bowel function, immune function, decreases all-cause mortality by 50%, 61 to 81 years old, right? Awesome stuff. Decreases depression. Love to go into that conversation. And just chiropractic care. Why is chiropractic important? It's not a low back, neck pain, headache profession. I know that's why most of you guys started coming in the first place.